part, large part of the globe, and you play one of two revolutionary groups uh, that are fighting against the order of nations. And also fighting against each other as well in the territory that is uh, vacant. Uh, what you do is you, you first start, you create a commander, you pick one of the two player factions, and then you pick, uh, pick your commander class. And there's four total, two per commander. At that point, you end up here at the war room. You play through a tutorial and that sort of thing. But the war room is where you really make the choices of what you want to play. So here we have all our different maps that we currently have available. Um, the red ones are PvP, uh, blue is PvE, and uh, green is survival, so fighting against like waves of AI. And they're all different sizes. Everyone think from a one versus one, a four-player co-op, 28 versus 28, so 56 players all on the same map. A lot of different ways to play, different game types and game styles. And then before you go into the map, you want to choose your, your company. Yes. Uh, so here's our little company down here on the bottom. You have all the units that you currently own over here, and then you choose which ones you want to bring in. Uh, and you can create multiple companies if you want to have you know, setups for different kinds. Like, I want to create a, I want one with infantry and tanks. You can make all those decisions there. Including hero units like Fire Nymph, which is this big flame tank. A lot of different choices here before you even go into the map. This is also where you're going to customize your units. You want to change the way they look, where their skins are, or, um, yes, digital camo. I'm sticking my head. Uh, also, modify individual units with small pluses to attack or damage. So, a lot of customization here because this is your persistent army that's going to be growing with you over time. Um, and as you level up, you'll get points to put into your build tree, and you can further customize your character, the type of units that are available to you, the type of structures. Uh, so, a lot of customization there as well. Correct. But what we're showing here today is a map called Full Board. It's a four player co op map, PVE. So we're going to log all these in here. The idea of this map is uh, four players. We're all part of the Liberation Front faction. We have this area in France that has a lot of valuable resources. The Order of Nations has decided that they want to take this area back from us. So they're sending in these giant panzer hulks, like on the behind you in that sign. Uh, we know that we can't win. So the idea here is before the timer runs out, we want to extract as many of these resources as possible. And if I can get to 5,000 resources before the timer runs out, we win the map. So if you just hit M, so here's a picture of the map. All the stars in the map are those uh, points we need to take to earn, to extract those resources. When we go over to those areas, uh, they'll turn blue, which means we own them. And then we'll start getting resources from them. At the same time, the Order of Nations units, the AI units, will be fighting to take those points back from us. So it's a constant back and forth of keeping those uh, points. Here's one right now. Uh, so we can get enough resources before the time runs out. Uh, additionally, what happens in about one minute is one of those Panzer Hulks comes onto the map. It starts rolling through the map, uh, shooting fire, doing orbital laser strikes, stun EMPs, just giant massive units. Uh, one of the things you can do also is upgrade these jamming stations. If you can upgrade these stations using tactical resources, then the Panzer Hulk that comes on the map will not be able to use that particular super weapon against you. So you have to make decisions. Do I want to take the time to try to upgrade these to kill the Panzer Hulk? Maybe I just want to try to avoid that Panzer Hulk and move around the edges trying to take and hold control points. We are going to attack the Panzer Hulk, of course, because that's much more fun. Uh, but we want to make these maps very, make these maps replayable. There's different ways to attack and, and defeat them, not always the same way to win every time. Same pathway to win. So red is all the uh, AI Order of Nations units that are attacking us. They're also attacking our jamming stations, too. If they are able to destroy both of our jamming stations, we lose. So we also have to defend that. So we have four players here trying to attack a Panzer Bolt, take those victory points to get those resources out, and also defend these jamming stations. So a lot going on. Is he on the map? There he is. So he's just coming on the map now. It's huge, and when you see other units next to it, you can see the scale. It starts running over everything in the map. 
uh, runs over trees, buildings. It'll run over its own units and destroy them. It doesn't care. It just wants to kill. Uh, so we'll let this roll a little bit. Uh, we'll explain a little bit more about basically how the game works. So we brought in all these units. Um, we use a basic rock, paper, scissors balancing. So I have the uh, Orion infantry unit selected here. And if you look, it tells you what units it's really good against. So you can inform yourself of how to play this smartly. So the, the Orion is really good against uh, aircraft, and also pretty good against light strike vehicles. And if you're ever wondering of what, what units are those types, you can always click on them and you can see that here as well. So understanding your units, what they're good or bad against, is really important to being successful. Also, every unit has uh, a unit ability. In the case of the Archimedes, which he has selected there, it's a tactical observer. It's this little probe that he sends out that can reveal an area of awareness and also uh, show any stealth units there. So every unit has those kinds of special abilities. We also have tactical structures. He has some cannon turrets and machine gun turrets. As long as you have the resources, you can drop these around. It'll take a little bit to build up, and then that's one way to hold points. Where you can take a point and then fill it with structures and leave it behind, and it should be able to defend itself for a little while. And those also have rock, paper, scissors balance to them. And then finally, he has his commander abilities. He has a, a napalm strike, which is just a high damage attack, as well as another ability. There's the napalm strike. Oh, you don't have your area awareness there. You got tricked with the fog of war. That was brave. So he's calling in his, air, his napalm strike. There you go. So really high damage, fun to do. So he's here, he's breaking through the wall. Um, you'll see him we'll start doing his super weapons. He's flaming out of the front there. There you go. That's his EMP bolt, so he, uh, it's the Panzerhulk AI unit that did that. It stuns all the units in that area so they can't move or attack. So it's really devastating. Of course, we've cheated, so he's invulnerable. But normally he'd be dead. Dead. Um, and you'll see he'll start running over stuff as well. Turn! Should we get serious about it? Turn! I'm gonna see him. He's gonna hit the building! Oh, yeah. So he'll knock over everything. He's a monster. All right. Another thing this map does for us, it gives us access to two special super weapons that we only get in this map. We have a nuke and an orbital laser strike. They're really expensive to use, but of course we've cheated. So we're going to go ahead and put a nuke on this guy. There we go. So he's, he's on fire now, he's severely injured. And those little individual turrets on fire there. He's down to about a third of his health. Doesn't care, he's still, uh, still running over stuff. Okay, now we're gonna do our orbital laser strike. Ooh, and that'll take him out. Uh, they're a little more powerful than they will be in the final version. It'll be a little bit harder to take him down, but I wanted to show you what it's like. So, that's one tactic, try to take down him right away, and then worry about the other AI units where we take points, and you can see this bar has been going up slowly. Um, but uh, that's pretty much a good, good basic explanation uh, about how this particular map works, and kind of in general how the game works, as far as moving units around and attacking. Um, but every map plays differently, which is one of the things really interesting about this. I know that's a lot, there's a lot there. If you have any questions, please ask. Uh, when you start the game normally, at level one, you'll go through a tutorial. We also have tutorial videos you can watch. And uh, you know, you start with less units, so you can really kind of learn as you go. Uh, we really want to make this easy for people to get into. I think a lot of people have become afraid of playing RTS games. Uh, but we feel we've made a game that people can feel more comfortable playing, especially in these huge maps when you 12 versus 12, for instance, this map here. If you're the 12th person on the team, you know, you can just kind of go along with other people. It's not as stressful as like playing one versus one. So one of the reasons we went free to play too is we want people to try it and say, guess what? 
You like strategy games, you just didn't know it. Okay, what can I buy in the item shop? So, how... Right, so, the game thing. So, nothing that we sell is sort of a pay for power type situation. We don't ever want that to happen. So, you can buy units and heroes in the uh, in the store, but you're, you can't buy a unit until you've unlocked it through regular gameplay. Okay. So, if there's a new unit that, that you have, that you want to buy, you have to put a point in the tattoo tree, you have to play and level up to get that point and unlock it before you can buy it. So we don't ever want there to be a situation where, you know, someone with mom or dad's credit card or something on day one is, has, just has a full load out of the most powerful units. It's not something that we want to we want to go through this time. And every map you play, you earn wealth, which is our in-game currency here. And you can use that to purchase those things. Exactly. So, so if you, you want to play and win, play and lose, get wealth, you can buy those things through that. You don't have to use no money. OK, um, if you have no money, you can play. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the only things that are, that are probably going to be only for credits is like the skins, okay. maybe an additional character slot. And then those portraits. sort of things, okay. Okay. portraits, okay. right. But the rest of it, fully available again in the in game game. It's just the regular game. Okay. Uh, we'll also, so we'll have skins, we'll have mods. Um, actually, mods are only sold for wealth. That's currently how it is. So, um, the boost, so you can gain levels faster, all sorts of stuff like that, but nothing that affects the okay. When are you going to launch? Uh, right now we're doing alpha tests and large closed beta weekends. Uh, and when we do a closed beta weekend and feel really good about it, we'll start open beta. Okay. Uh, sure. so, which we feel like we're, we're getting really close to. Uh, but we don't have an exact date. Okay. But the, the PvP and the factions, is there any like territory that you take over and you control it or Yeah, the problem is with this demo here, we're the only ones on the map so you don't see it. I think if you go to the show floor you can see it. But, for instance, if Liberation Front won enough matches to take Deep Hammer, uh, the whole western side of Australia will turn orange, orange this color, essentially, which shows that Liberation Front currently owns it. Uh, and we're adding in UI elements as well that can show you like, how much a pair of territory is owned, right. so you can actually see it kind of going back, and then it'll go neutral, and then the other faction back and forth. So really this world map is your constant persistent view of the PvP metagame. Okay. So the first thing you see when you log in is sort of this bird's eye view of, of how, well, how, how the battle you, uh, is going. Yeah. So maybe maybe your faction uh, owned last stand last night when you went to bed and you wake up and you see it's flipped and you say, Well we gotta we want that we want that territory back because we want the buffs and the bonuses that come from it. So today you decide you're gonna play last stand. So how does it work? I mean, is it like a certain amount of times you have to win on a certain map, like one faction, and that's when it flips? Mm -hmm. or? It, it is, but it's um, it's dynamic based on how many people are playing on that map, as well as how many you know how many uh, how much how many matches you've won in a row, for instance. Right. right? So there's it's, a little, it's not as simple as play a hundred, win a hundred, get it. It's just a big formula, point space you know system, and, and, and it goes stuff. back and forth, back and forth. So, yeah. um, at the end of that campaign, you can see the results from every map. You can see how each faction did, and then there's rewards that come from uh, whichever faction uh, owned the most territory at the end of a campaign. Do different territories give you different buffs, or is it just the most yeah. you own? Uh, so this is work in progress, <laughs> uh, but here's like the current buffs on this one. So if you take Icebreaker, which is our two v two map. Uh, your faction, everyone in your faction will get a 1% increase in critical hit. Right, cool. Uh, and these will change every campaign. Right. So they'll always be changing, always be different. You can add this stuff in. So there's only world maps and no servers. There is. So, yeah. so that we do, we do, we do have a server or shard type setup like you would see in, a, in, a, in, a, in most MMOs. Um, so the difference between Typical RTS is peer to peer, and we have a server client side uh, setup. And what that allows us to do, first of all, is awesome things like 56 player maps. Obviously, on a peer to peer setup, you couldn't have that many people. Uh, just, everybody would be stuck at the lowest person's speed. So, when we have uh, a server that can handle that sort of stuff, it also allows us to uh, be really flexible and give people uh, sort of settings and, and different ideas for what they want. So, for instance, if we you, you talk about role-playing servers, uh, PvE-focused servers, PvP-focused servers, if, if we ever wanted to have uh, 
you get asked a lot about esports, which is definitely something we're interested in. And if, uh, if that's something we go into someday, the shard setup allows us to say, well, we're going to designate this shard as the competitive shard. And maybe its settings will be a little bit different from just the regular shards, so that the players who are really interested in that ladder play and the esports type stuff can go to that shard and expect maybe a different rule set. So it really it allows us to be extremely flexible in what we can offer our players. So are you just kind of spitballing that the one? There's nothing in concrete. What nothing type? At of, all. Right. Not yet. We might not do any of that at all. Right. <laughs> we we have to make sure the game is is right for mm -hmm. esports. So it's definitely something that we're interested in. Um, but we've got to get it. Uh, we got to get it so that it fits that before I mean, we just jump straight into it. I suppose the way it's set up already, you have the PvP and the PvE mm -hmm. in the same server anyway. So, I mean, is it uh, localization? So, US only with US, EU only with EU? Or? You, know, you know, Tryon is running everything in all of Europe and North America. So, although we might have physical servers in Europe and in the US, uh, you can play on any server you want. Right. Um, and then you can choose the language and the patcher if you want to play French, German. Or English, this is how we're starting. So if you want to, you can play from Germany in French on a US server. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's another benefit of that of that client server uh, setup is our alpha servers are all uh, in America. Right. We've actually had no complaints about lag latency from our European alpha users, right. which is awesome for us. Is that We're even with the 56 man battles? Yeah, I mean that's more of a client problem yeah. than a server problem anyway. Right. So uh, yeah. we feel really good about that and, and the ability to play wherever you want and just give our players that freedom. Yeah, is, you go to Hall 8 and you know that's where we're we're playing off the alpha shard there, which is in. Dallas, Texas. So if you want to get a feel about how that feels, you can just go take a look. Yeah, we've got 24 stations set up in Hall 8 where you can play any of our PvP maps and uh, play with the Alpha players. Talk to the Alpha players if you'd like to. So, I mean, I mean, your do you guys kind of get a lot of the feedback from the Alpha players and you react to it? Or? Oh, yeah, they, they have been incredible. Yep. They've yep. been such a great group, um, and it's different than doing a closed beta where you have you know a couple thousand people testing something totally different than. You know, 200 really dedicated guys that are know every unit and are so they're like part of the team. Really. Cool. Yeah, I think actually we had an alpha player the first part of the day helping demo nice. in Hall A. So yep. free staff, like free staff. Yeah, sure, free staff. <laughs> oh, they're great. They're great. Excellent. I'm good with that. All right. That's cool. Fantastic. Thanks for.